Good day, Navajo Nation. This is Jonathan Nez, your Vice President of the Navajo Nation, bringing you episode 15. And we appreciate all our viewers for tuning in to our YouTube channel, and it's getting a lot more views. Um, but this episode, we want to bring you a highlight of our big summit that uh, happened in Tsele, the, the Nebich Iya Summit, the Navajo Food Summit that happened on April 6, 7, and 8th. And we want to highlight that for you all. Uh, it was a great turnout. Over 300 people came out to uh, have a discussion about our food systems, food system here on the Navajo Nation. So we appreciate your participation and uh, we look forward to uh, next year's uh, Denebich Iya Summit as well. Maybe we're gonna have that in you, but listen out for that. Now let me just kind of give, go back a little bit and let you know how this all started. Uh, in that particular summit, David was and a lot of the uh, planning group said we need to take control of our food systems here on the Navajo Nation. Jokon Anidi and Yvonne Yaha, and Yvonne mentioned that when we go to the store, in a supermarket here on the Navajo Nation, all the foods that you see don't even originate from the Navajo Nation. Did you guys know that? Hadeshitian and Dayiye, Lebash is in the Alabanae and Banae and Dayiye, 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 you know, a lot of these foods that come here in our sold in supermarkets are not our own foods. It's imported from somewhere else. Not to scare you, but that should, you know, pique your interest because if foods are coming somewhere else, that means we don't know what are in these foods that are coming into our nation. We call ourselves a sovereign nation. We call ourselves the Navajo Nation. And, but yet, we don't control our food system here. I'll give you an example. You know, a lot of these foods that are coming in, like meats, produce, we don't know what's in there. You know, studies indicate, research indicates that in order for businesses to get more money, they have to, you know, produce more foods. And that means quantity too. So a lot of these foods, these meats, are, the animals are injected with steroids to make that yield so that there can be more meats. And then they're offered in our supermarkets. We eat what is being placed into these foods. Little do we know. And then if there's steroid injections in, in beef and chicken, we consume that. And if you look at fruits and vegetables, it's the same thing. You got pesticides, you got certain chemicals into these fruits and vegetables that make it last longer to make it even more colorful and then yet we purchase that and we say these are healthy foods because it's in the vegetable or fruit section of our supermarket and there's all these additives that are in there and then we consume it and then we eat it and then we wonder about why our people out there are having a tough time. People have diabetes, heart disease, a lot of health defects. And we wonder why. But it's really simple. The Navajo Nation does not control their food system. Uh, we also did uh, the Gray, Gray Hills uh, Parent Summit there in uh, Twin Nestes, Arizona on uh, March or April 11th. 
And so we wanted to bring you some highlights of that uh, great um, event that occurred, you know, encouraging our parents as well as our students there at Gray Hills Academy High School. And uh, uh, it was great to hear and listen to uh, a lot of the present presenters there and in really empowering our, our parents and empowering our young people. And I think a parent summit like today gives us an opportunity to come back together and think about how we are raising our children, being parents, right? And that's why I was saying, I see some young people here, and I appreciate you all being here. And I mentioned earlier that the first authorities are parents. If we respect authority, if we respect mom and dad, young people, you will respect a police officer later on in life. You will respect leadership. You will respect veterans, those who have fought for us. But it has to come back to the family level. And parents, let's not blame our teachers, our school board members, our administrators, our leaders in Window Rock. Let us take control, take back our families, is what I'm saying and to start saying, this is my house. I'll give you an example for me. As a young man, my mom and dad were in the house and I, I got rebellious. I got rebellious. But you know what my dad would always say to me? If you live in this household, you will respect me and you will listen to me. And I used to get dragged to church and I used to don't like going to church, being dragged to go to church. I'm saying it because the pastor's sitting right here. And I'm sure he knows. But being taken to church on a Sunday, every, every Sunday, I didn't like it. But you know what my dad said? You live in my household, you live under my roof, you're going to church. Shadini. And I always remember that later in life. But then look, um, my son, it's quite interesting how it's a cycle, huh? You live under my roof, son, you're going to church, you know? But that's where the teaching is. That's what I mean. You have to take back your families to put your foot down. And children, young people, respect your parents because they're doing everything they can to help you grow or your guardian. They love you. They appreciate you. They might not say it all the time, but they do. That's why they, some of, some of them give off this tough Navajo love glow, right? Dying off top, dying off top. Go to school, get an education. Go to school, get your degree. It doesn't stop there, right? It's, they say, Come back and help your people. What is the most powerful form of leadership there is? Leadership by what? Leadership by example. Anybody who's got kids or grandkids, you know how this works. What you say, what you do comes back to you. So we have to make sure that we're doing the right thing. And it doesn't mean that we're setting a perfect example. None of us are perfect. I was taught that the Creator made us that way to keep us humble. But it doesn't mean that we keep trying to do the right thing. We keep stumbling in the right direction. Leadership by example is where it's at. When I was growing up as a kid, my dad and I were doing the yard. We were, I was 14 years old, and we, were, we lived down in Mississippi at the time. My dad was stationed down there. And it was smoking hot. And we were both soaked with sweat, and we took a break. And my dad, well, I stepped under the shade, under the eaves of the house to get out of the sun. My dad steps out in the bright, beautiful, brilliant, smoking hot sunshine and lights up a cool menthol cigarette. It takes a long drag. I have never seen a more joyous expression on a human being's face. He took this long drag and went, <sighs> yeah. DJ, don't ever smoke, it'll kill you. <laughs> it's laughable. That era of do as I say, it didn't work with us as kids and it doesn't work with us now. And it doesn't work with them. We have to be in alignment. What we say and what we do need to match. 
Setting that good example is important. Like I said, it's not setting a perfect example. But it's setting a good one that's worthy of respect, worthy of followership, worthy of attention. We also had uh, a visit. I went home uh, for the uh, Chantel Youth Summit, the gathering of Native Americans. Uh, we received some funding from SAMHSA, some dollars from the federal government to do these uh, youth uh, summits throughout the Navajo Nation. We also went to the Ganado one, uh, the youth summit. So we're just really uh, impressed with a lot of the youth organizations out there coming together. As you all know, we just recently, uh, President recently signed the uh, Youth uh, Advisory Council into law. So there's gonna be a Youth Advisory Council giving input to the three branches of government and listen out for that because there'll be, the Office of the Net Youth will be um, gathering all the applications from the five agencies all, all across the Navajo Nation for those that are interested in being in this Navajo Nation Youth Advisory Council. Uh, so that's great. And the Shanto event, the, uh, the Ganado event was also a highlight for us. We got a chance to bring the Building Communities of Hope presentation to our young people as well as listening to them on, on many of their thoughts and some of their recommendations for uh, the planning process for the youth and elder component of our four pillars. I uh, was at the, uh, the youth council meeting uh, a few days ago and they were, they introduced me and I said a few things and next thing you know they said, hey, come and uh, hang out with us during this uh, gathering of, uh, of uh, nations. So four communities uh, were picked to uh, have this type of forum for our young people to actually talk and talk. But no, so not only do they have any advocate on your communities, Ganado was fortunate to be one of those uh, communities that got awarded this uh, this grant. So, and then after the Shanto event, we went to the Native Vision where they had a lacrosse uh, uh, practice and we visited with our, our, our kids there, our young people, and had a great time with uh, the young folks there. Um, I First time I ever um, picked up a, a lacrosse um, stick or, or the uh, the ones where you threw, throw the ball with and uh, they said I was a natural so I, I don't know maybe I'll go into lacrosse now but it was uh, a great event I want to say thank you to Native Vision all the volunteers out there and the, uh, also the teachers uh, that taught our, our young people lacrosse too so it was a great event I appreciate the invitation to be out there Oh, overall, you know, the junk food tax is going out to the chapters. I appreciate Twinness Dizzy for starting to plan on their youth complex. Uh, we also have trail development happening, Shanto utilizing their uh, junk food tax. So uh, on another episode, what we want to do is highlight uh, many of these communities that are allocating the junk food tax for these projects. So those of you that are listening at the local communities that, that know about uh, or know a little bit more about what you all want to do with the junk food tax, email us. We got our email on this uh, video as well. Email us your project so we can go out there and check those out. We want to highlight this because a lot of the people, especially our lawmakers here, uh, would be, uh, would appreciate that type of information because, you know, we're empowering uh, our, our people through health and wellness and these are projects that are going to be uh, worthwhile for our younger generation. So send those uh, projects over to us and we'll come out and visit you, you all in the near future. Uh, lastly, I want to highlight the uh, Pray, Run, Eat Healthy and Exercise Daily event in Tuhajile at the Chapter House on May 17th, 2017. Uh, it's going to be from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. We're going to have uh, an ultra runner uh, bestseller um, on the New York um, Times bestseller, uh, Scott Jerick, who is a real world renowned ultra runner who's going to be visiting us. We're going to uh, purchase 200 books for this is a free event. We're going to purchase 200 books 
for our uh, participants and you get a chance to uh, have one of Scott's books and also have an opportunity for him to sign it at this event as well. And, and that this event on May 17th is a kickoff for the plant-based uh, conference that's happening uh, there at the University of New Mexico on May 18, 19, and 20th at the UNM campus so you know uh, Scott and I will be presenting there as well and uh, it's it's about nutrition you know um, preparing uh, healthy foods um, for your you and your family so it's a great event listen out for that we'll put it our we'll put the link on this uh, episode and for your information and so we want to say thank you and uh, appreciate all the viewers out there uh, if you know others, for, feel free to forward this video to others so that we can uh, make this video grow and that way we can get a lot more uh, participation from our Navajo Nation folks throughout the, in and around the Navajo Nation. Uh, thank you very much and we'll see you on the trail. And this is episode 15, Navajo Nation Vice President on the Move, running the Nebuchadnezzar. Thank you very much.